Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Abdullah Awad, and uh, today I'll be doing my project on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and uh, how it revolutionized commercial aircraft development technologies. It's My project is called the Journey to the Dreamliner. So to start about how this all began, the dream, if you would, the 787 was designed to be the successor to the Boeing 747 in a time where technology was improving and Boeing needed better their airplanes. Uh, the idea for a successor to the 747 originated in 2001, at least officially announced, with the main candidates being the 747X, a more efficient version of the 747, and the Sonic Cruiser, a faster version that ran at the same gas efficiency. However, as a result of 9-11, air aircraft fuel prices skyrocketed and every company was just more interested in having a big plane that used as little gas as possible to move people forward. That's when the 787 was announced to be developed in the year 2003. So what the things that made the 787 stand apart from any other plane in Boeing's uh, line at the time is uh, a carbon fiber body, which allowed for a more a more lighter plane that could be made larger, which would increase fuel efficiency. And uh, it also made it for more flexible wings that could increase speed, aerodynamics, turning radius, all of that. So the way the body was made is there's a carbon fiber base held together with a plastic resin that's baked in a customized oven. If you look at the picture down there with the A350 fuselage, which is the main competitor to the 787, and it was made a little bit earlier but uh, has the same core principles behind it. There, the fuselage is baked into sections, and then there's the oven back there, as well as some other parts. Parts of the wings and tail are made in the same manufacturing process. Uh, titanium is made for the frame uh, in contrast to the traditional aluminum body, and that's a result of galvanic oxidation that occurs between aluminum and carbon fiber, which I'll go over a little bit later. Um, Basically, they needed to use titanium for a durable frame. And the traditional way to make titanium parts was to have a block and cut it up. But this leads to a lot of waste, which cost Boeing a lot of money. So they attempted printing by uh, contracting Norse Titanium, a specialized titanium machinist company. Uh, they initially tried powder printing, but this left too many imperfections in the metal. So they went with wire printing, where they would line up a bunch of wires of titanium together and fuse them into the part they need and then shape it down via laser grinding, uh, standard CNC grinding and other methods, which cut down waste by 25 to 50%. Going into the material maintenance, which goes back to our galvanic oxidation problem we had earlier, to summarize this in a way that's... Uh, easy to swallow. Uh, atoms naturally uh, inclined to different types of charges, be it negative or positive. If you look at this table up here, aluminum alloys are in the up to the 1.1 negative voltage percentage, as opposed to titanium, which is more in the 0 0.2. And carbon fiber is somewhere close to this range. However, I could not find any tables that uh, had carbon fiber, this is just strictly for metals. So what would happen is when you put carbon fiber with aluminum, because of the great voltage difference in between the atoms, they would lightly shock each other and build up heat on a microscopic level, make cracks, and by taking off the layer protection on aluminum, it became, begins to oxidize, which when you're going almost Mach 1 in the middle of the sky, that amount of pressure and any small imperfection could end up snapping a whole wing off or a tail wing or et cetera. Another small thing that was done for material maintenance is since carbon fiber is not conductive like traditional aluminum bodied airplanes, Boeing put uh, metal rivets in with caps on them that would conduct any electricity from lightning strikes and run them through a copper lining that was above the titanium frame but under the uh, carbon fiber body. Gas tanks are also filled with nitrogen gas to prevent combustion as a result of a little spark in case lightning is strong enough to spark on the body. Uh, the cap on top of the rivets and the copper lining were later removed for cost reasons, but otherwise the Boeing 787 maintains all these technologies. These are the sources I used for this project, and that's all I have to present. Thank you for listening, and I'm open to any questions.